I assure you that this place literally becomes like a living beast. That was more talking. Whoa. Trying to get to him. I've never seen him like this before. That's weird. Hello, everyone, and get ready to uncover the eerie secrets of the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. This massive old building in Weston, West Virginia has a really strange history. Back in the 1800s, it was supposed to help people with mental health problems, but things got pretty messed up over time. Now it's known for being haunted, and there are tons of spooky tales floating around about it. So, let's dive in and explore the wild past and ghostly happenings of this infamous asylum together. Please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories like these. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum is in Weston, a small town in West Virginia, USA. They started building it in 1858 and finished in 1881. An architect named Richard Andrews designed it in the Gothic Revival style. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum faced delays and interruptions for years in its construction, mainly due to the timing of the American Civil War, which diverted resources and manpower away from the project. Additionally, the ambitious Gothic Revival design and the sheer size of the complex added to the challenges. The rugged terrain of West Virginia also made logistics difficult. These factors combined resulted in the prolonged construction period, pushing the completion date. The asylum was intended to provide care and treatment for individuals with mental illnesses. It looks really impressive with its big front and wide grounds. Fancy details like big stones and tall towers all over it. The asylum tried to take care of itself. It was self-sufficient. It had its own farms where they grew food, wells for water, and workshops where patients could do different tasks. This helped them rely less on outside world and made the place more like its own little community. People thought it was a good thing for mental health care at first. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum was meant to house about 250 patients when it was built. Patients began arriving in 1864 when it first opened. It had doctors and staff who were responsible for taking care of the patients. The person in charge was Dr. Thomas Story Kirkbride, who was a well-known psychiatrist at the time. He helped create the design and treatment philosophy for the asylum. Other doctors and nurses worked alongside him to provide care and treatment for the patients. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum became popular over time due to its size, reputation, and the sheer number of patients it housed. As one of the largest mental institutions in the United States at the time, it gained attention for its size and the challenges it faced in providing adequate care for such a large population as it reached its peak in the late 19th and early 20th centuries when it held over 2,400 patients, far exceeding its original capacity. Patients started sleeping on floors and they lacked separate rooms and cages for harmful patients. The asylum accepted individuals with various mental illnesses, ranging from depression and anxiety, drug addicts to more severe conditions like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Additionally, Factors such as poverty, homelessness, and social stigma often led to individuals being institutionalized for reasons beyond their mental health. The admission process varied over time, but typically involved a referral from a physician or family member, followed by an assessment. Unfortunately, due to societal attitudes and limited understanding of mental health at the time, Many people were admitted to the asylum for reasons that we now recognize as unjust or unnecessary. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum utilized a range of treatment methods throughout its history, reflecting the evolving understanding of mental health care at the time. Initially, the asylum followed the moral treatment approach, which emphasized kindness, routine, and productive activities as essential components of therapy. Patients were encouraged to engage in tasks such as gardening, crafts, and farm work to promote a sense of purpose and well-being. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, like many psychiatric institutions of its time, has a dark history. When the asylum became overcrowded and resources stretched thin, treatment methods often became more limited and, in some cases, controversial, marked by instances of mistreatment and abuse of patients. Some of the treatments administered were not only ineffective, but also inhumane. 
restraint methods such as straitjackets, shackles and solitary confinement were used to manage patients deemed unruly or difficult to control. These practices often resulted in physical discomfort, psychological trauma, and prolonged suffering. Moreover, the asylum employed controversial treatments like hydrotherapy, where patients were subjected to prolonged immersion in cold water baths or dousing with water hoses, purportedly to calm agitation or induce a state of tranquility. Such methods lacked scientific basis and were often more punitive than therapeutic. Additionally, the practice of lobotomy, a surgical procedure involving the severing of connections in the brain's prefrontal cortex, was performed in some psychiatric institutions during the mid-20th century, including the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. This procedure, intended to alleviate symptoms of mental illness, often resulted in severe cognitive impairment and personality changes in patients. They started treating patients by cruelty, neglect, and a lack of regard for patients' well-being. Dr. Freeman and some other doctors like him started performing lobotomies live in front of everyone just for fun, where they would use an ice pick-like tool and drive it through the patient's eye socket with a hammer. Many patients died because of this practice. Dr. Freeman would perform at least 20 lobotomies in a day, and it included children as well. As many as 490 patients died because of this. These practices underscore the darker aspects of the asylum's history and serve as a reminder of the need for compassionate and evidence-based approaches to mental health care. According to reports, patients began to harm themselves and some patients took their own lives while at the asylum. The asylum shut down in 1994 because the mental health care center noticed a sudden and massive decline in the population of the asylum. In just a few years, it declines from 2,300 patients to 224. There were many complaints about the asylum. Now, the asylum has gained a reputation for being haunted, with many visitors reporting experiences such as unexplained sounds, sightings, and sensations during their visits. These claims have contributed to its popularity among ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts. Paranormal investigators and other visitors have reported the sighting of shadowy figures, along with disembodied voices and horrible screams. It is said to be haunted by many spirits of patients and even of children. Many visitors to the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum have reported experiencing paranormal activity, and some have claimed to capture evidence of ghosts or other supernatural phenomena through photographs, videos, or audio recordings. However, the authenticity and reliability of such recordings are often debated, as they can be influenced by various factors such as lighting conditions, camera artifacts, or audio interference. While some individuals firmly believe in the validity of their recordings as evidence of paranormal activity, others remain skeptical and attribute such phenomena to natural explanations or suggest that they may be influenced by suggestion or psychological factors. Ultimately, whether or not someone has definitively recorded evidence of ghosts at the asylum is a matter of interpretation and belief. While there is no scientific evidence to support the existence of ghosts, the asylum's eerie atmosphere and storied past continue to captivate visitors seeking a glimpse into its haunted history. What do you think about all this? Do let us know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Until next time, stay cautious and remain vigilant.